Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode five of this beginner's tutorial that I'm working on. And this is gonna be the last episode. Um, hasn't gotten a lot of uh, views, but I, I really wanted to finish it off so I didn't leave anybody hanging. If you are watching the, the series and you have questions, um, let me know. I'd be happy to do either a, um, an add-on video or just answer your question that you have down in the comments. So what we're gonna to cover today are two things. One is your drive settings and the um, exposure metering settings over here to the right and both of these are controlled by these i don't know tabs if you will um, you can see them right here and you kind of move them left and right they're hard to get to that's one of the dials um, that I, i'm not very fond of on the fuji i don't know how they've could have done it better and maybe it's just my fat fingers, I don't know, but they're hard to um, they're hard to change. The good thing is you don't have to change them very often, especially this this uh, metering one. Um, hard to hard, very very hard to get to, but I never change it. So um, let's let's talk about this drive dial first. And what it does is you can go from video if you're shooting video to bracketing, and we'll talk about that in a second. Continuous high, this is a burst mode, so if you're taking multiple photos in a series, this is the high setting, means you're gonna take more frames per, per second. Continuous low, same, you just a little bit lower, you're taking multiple shots at a lower speed. And um, the single shot, see I can't even hardly move it, this is what I use pretty much 98% of the time. And this is just one, uh, one photo per press of the shutter release button. And then the other ones are kind of gimmicky. Um, this is like a dual picture. We're not, not even gonna cover these, uh, where you can take one shot, move your camera, and put two like ghosting images in, in the same photo. And then the advanced, you can do some, again, gimmicky features. And then the last on, on the drive dial is to do a panoramic, where you hit it and it'll tell you to go into a direction and you gotta go fast and it stitches them together. I've done it a few times and it, it never really turned out well. Um, I recommend that if you wanted to do a panoramic, you take multiple um, pictures in a series and you stitch them together. So we're not gonna go in much detail on the last three settings, really most of the settings, right? So because you know what the um, video mode is, it's self-explanatory and I cover the continuous high, low, and the single. So there's not really much to talk about in that. Um, there are some settings when you get in there, you can adjust your frames per second for continuous high and low, but again, pretty self-explanatory. Let's talk about bracketing, because that's really the only one, and I might even consider this a little bit above an inter above beginner, maybe more of an intermediate, but let me uh, at least take a second to explain what this is. If you wanna um, take multiple pictures in a series, and this is mostly often used to increase your high dynamic, dynamic range. If you're doing a portrait photo, and it really has to be a static picture because if you're taking multiple pictures in a series, if you have any motion, um, obviously it's, it's not gonna work out well. You're gonna have blur, unless you're wanting blur, but um, most folks don't. Usually they're taking it to increase your high dynamic range. You have some spots that you want to expose or have more room to expose. You might have bright lights, uh, a highlight that's, that's blowing your photo out, but you also have some deep, deep, dark shadows. Uh, when you um, cover a range of multiple exposures, it lets you uh, stitch them together in post, which we're not covering on this, in this video, but it will let you create a higher dynamic range. You can bring out those darks and um, high points because you have within those five, in my case, I haven't set to five, you have certain pictures that aren't blown out and the same thing with your shadows. You have certain, one of those fives that are more exposed and, and higher exposed and you can recover more details. So let's go, uh, we're in bracket mode. I'm gonna go into the menu and I'll just show you where, where that setting is and, and you can kind of play around with it. So it's in, uh, I have it set to mine, but it's gonna, you're gonna find it in the camera icon, which is the shooting settings. I'm gonna go over once into the drive settings. It's on the first menu. 
um, bracketing settings and, and this is the same this drive settings menu here's where you can control if you want to go into shutter um, high and low and you can change your frames per second um, you can do it here as well as the advanced filtering I don't I don't mess around with that but I do I do go in here for bracketing so let me go uh, into bracketing settings and you have different options you have film simulation white balance we're not going to cover all those um, me and most others will use AE bracketing. That's what I'm set to right now. And I'm gonna show you um, what that is. I'm gonna go over to the right. See, I'm in AE bracketing. I'm gonna go to AE bracketing settings. And the frames step setting, I'm gonna go over. You can adjust it to cover um, multiple frames. Um, I have plus or minus five. Um, that gives me five exposures plus and minus the um, metered uh, even exposure. So it's gonna take a series of five pictures and I have it set to one stop, meaning I'm gonna go one stop up or down, but I'm gonna have five stops of exposure. Uh, so if I'm metered exactly correct, I'm gonna have two additional um, exposures, one stop each above and the same below. And you could do that three which means you're perfectly exposed one stop above one stop below um, you could change the step up where i could do fractions of exposures or multiple exposures so i could set this to two so i could do um, uh, again one frame perfectly exposed two other frames one above and one below that are two stops above or two stops below so that's really it. Um, I'm gonna go down to one frame. Um, you never wanna use one frame. I, um, you always wanna use continuous. And what one frame is, is you'll press the shutter release button. It'll say, okay, go ahead and take your other one. Hit it again, hit it again, hit it again. What continuous does is you hit it once, um, hit the shutter release once. It'll go, da -da 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 -da. it'll take them all. <laughs> the sound effects are free, guys. It'll take them all in a series. And then you can even change the sequence. You want I wanna do the lower ones first, then perfect exposure, and then the high ones. It just uh, seems to work out good for me. And uh, I'll show you what it sounds like. So, see? Uh, and that's pretty much it for your drive settings. Um, the other dial uh, or wheel, I don't even know what this is even called, I guess it's a dial, is your metering modes. Now the first setting all the way to the left with a, just the dot around the brackets is spot metering. Um, what this does is it applies a heavy ratio or heavy weight to the center of your frame. Um, typically or ideally that this could be used if you have a heavy contrast between light and dark between your subject and the background. Um, this like a lot of these settings are really useless. Um, this one has a little bit of use if you change a setting in your camera. I'll go ahead and show you uh, what that setting is, guys. So go ahead and go to the menu and go into autofocus, manual focus, and go over and down to interlock spot, AE, and focus area. I have mine on. What this enables you to do, I'm gonna come out of this now, because it's on. See this, this little uh, focus point that I have in green? Um, here it goes, that I can move around. And what this will do is it'll let me switch over, if only if I'm in this, um, this spot metering, is it will meter on that little box. So if I have something over here, see that's brighter, um, my exposure went up about a stop. It allows me to meter wherever I put my focus point which is kind of cool. Um, it does have some practical use in certain situations, but rare. I probably use this maybe 1% or less than 1%, and it's really the only one that I use outside of multi-metering. So let's talk about the other ones for a second. Um, I'm gonna go over, and this is a center weighted. So it takes the, the, the weight of the whole frame and it applies a little bit of a percentage, um, a little bit of a greater weight to the center of the frame. The um, last one is average. It just averages your whole frame no matter what it is. Um, and then 
the one, the one second to the left, and this is what is referred to as multi-metering. Now, me and 99.9% .9 of everybody else out there, we leave our cameras set to this um, and don't change it. You really shouldn't have a need to change it. If you have a need to change it, um, you can do one of two things, uh, right? So if it's not if it's not metering correctly your camera for what photo that you're trying to take, do one of two things. If you're in any kind of a, a automatic mode, use your exposure compensation. Adjust accordingly um, to the photo that you're trying to capture with this. Let your camera expose higher or lower and then adjust it accordingly. If you're shooting in manual, expose properly based on your adjustments and what you look at on your EVF. Now, if your EVF is blowing out the area that you want, make your adjustments. Same thing with the exposure compensation. You're gonna adjust it accordingly. So you, you don't even need to use any of these others. And the multimeter, it takes in a lot of different components and uses a camera's processor in the brain of the camera to figure out what the proper exposure is. And most modern cameras, including the Fuji, it does it well most of the time. So me and many others, leave that setting there and don't change it. So that's why this little fiddly uh, um, wheel dial, drive dial, whatever it's called, um, it's, it's not a big deal because um, I never change it. It's actually good, it's hard to get to so it doesn't accidentally get changed. Um, this one is the only one that I, I think it could, um, you know, protrude a little bit more, have more of an indexing, because this one I do use every once in a while or need to change it once in a while. So that's it, guys. Um, I hope this uh, series has been useful to you. And if again, if you have any further questions, uh, if you want to see a follow-up video, um, and I'm going to make other videos, uh, I'm going to do some on lighting and uh, flash photography, but this is really, I wanna keep it small for the beginner. I want to uh, have an opportunity to cover some basics for folks just getting into photography and the Fujifilm cameras. So um, yeah, that's, that wraps it up. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave them below. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I, I do appreciate all you guys' support. Thanks, have a great day.